Today we'll talk about translation to and from propositional logic. Every now and then I'll be using the abbreviation PL instead of propositional logic, but just to say breath. But don't forget that PL here simply means propositional logic. One of our goals is to use the former tools provided by propositional logic to test the validity of arguments that have been stated in English, for instance. To do that, we must learn to go from English sentences to PL sentences and vice versa. Notice that this process of translation is far from being mechanical and that deciding among competing symbolizations often takes a certain amount of judgment. Nevertheless, there are certain rules of thumb that can be used. Now, what is the criterion of a good translation? How do we know that our translation has been good? Just like any other translation, the idea is that the translated sentence and the sentence intended as a translation must mean the same. Now, the language of PL is very impoverished with respect to English and cannot capture all the shades of meaning that English can express. As a matter of fact, the only aspect of meaning that PL cares about is whether a sentence is true or false. In consequence, our criterion for a correct translation is that the conditions under which the English sentence is true must be the same as the conditions under which the PL sentence that symbolizes it is true. So, if you can manage that, then you're done. Now to our topic. Suppose that we have this set of atomic sentences, A to F, each of which symbolizes a particular English sentence. For instance, A symbolizes Al has sweet moves, F symbolizes Fred is tearing down the house, and so on. Let's keep our list of atomic sentences to the left. To the right, we have sentences that have been formed by taking the atomic sentences to the left and then joining them and modifying them in various ways with English conjunctions and negations, which, as we know, correspond in PL to the ampersand and the tilde. Our task, then, is to take the sentences on the right and translate them into PL. Let's begin with our first complex sentence. Delia and Emily are both tearing down the house. Now, which of the atomic sentences to the left constitutes sentence number one? That's right, it's D and E. Now, what one is saying is basically two things, namely that Delia is tearing down the house and Emily is tearing down the house. One is equivalent to one star. Now, one star is simply the conjunction of D and E since it is just D and E joined by AND. We know that the conjunction sign corresponding to AND is the ampersand. So our PL translation is simply D and E joined by the ampersand. That is D ampersand E. Now for the second one. The atomic sentences involved are B and A. Now, Boris and Al don't both have sweet moves is simply the negation of the sentence, Boris and Al both have sweet moves. So, our translation procedure is going to be the following. First step, form the conjunction, Boris has sweet moves and Al has sweet moves. Second step, add a negation sign in front. Now, since we are negating the whole conjunction, and not only a part of it, we have to make the negation apply to the whole sentence. We do this by enclosing the conjunction in parentheses and then adding the tilde to the left. The parentheses are absolutely necessary, otherwise we would end up with a sentence like B, which means something different, namely that Al doesn't have sweet moves but Boris does. This is because the negation sign only applies to the smaller sentence that follows it, and so in this case it would be negating A exclusively. Now to the third sentence. Delia isn't tearing down the house, although Boris has sweet moves. The main connective here is although, which in propositional logic is simply a conjunction. That is, the sentences it forms are true if and only if both the components are true. In this case, for three to be true, it must be the case that it must be the case both that Delia isn't tearing down the house and that Boris has sweet moves. So since this is a conjunction, the main connective is going to be the ampersand. Next, we have to determine what the conjuncts are going to be. 
The left conjunct is Delia isn't tearing down the house, which is simply the negation of D. That is, it is tilde followed, followed by D. The right conjunct is Boris has sweet moves, which is B by itself. So our translation for three is not D ampersand B. Four is simply the negation of the sentence Emily and Fred are both tearing down the house. Now let's complicate things by translating sentences containing conjunction, negation, and disjunction. Sentence one is simply the disjunction of B and C. So it is the equivalent to B and C joined by the V. In sentence two, we find both negation and disjunction. Here we can proceed in steps if you want. We can see that the main connective, what defines the whole sentence, is either or, which is the V. So our first step is to add the V. Now let's work on the disjuncts. The left disjunct is Delia isn't tearing down the house, which is simply the negation of D. So by replacement, we get not D, V, Boris has to it moves. Finally, the right disjunct is just B, so the result is not D or B. And this is the translation of sentence number two. Now for three, which is neither Boris nor Carl has sweet moves. This sentence is basically the negation of either Boris or Carl has sweet moves. So our first step towards a translation is the following. This is either Boris or Carl has sweet moves preceded by a tilde. Or what is the same, it's not the case that either Boris has sweet moves or Carl has sweet moves. The main connective in the sentence in parentheses is either or, which means that the two component sentences are joined by a V. Now we simply have to substitute each of the disjuncts by its corresponding letter. And this is the end result. Finally, let's deal with four which is more complex, since it's made of three atomic sentences, the ones that are emphasized on the left. The first step is to determine the main connective, which in this case seems to be AND, so that 4 has two main immediate components. The first is Boris has sweet moves, and the second is either Emily or Fred is tearing down the house. Our left conjunct is an atomic sentence, namely B. However, our right conjunct is a complex sentence, but this time the main connective is either or. So we simply substitute with the V. Now we are finally left with two disjuncts, each of which is an atomic sentence. I leave the final sentence as an exercise for you. Now suppose that we invert the procedure, that is, we have propositional logic sentences and we want to know how they translate into English. Well, suppose that you have this key. A corresponds to Al speaks Gaelic, B corresponds to Bill speaks Gaelic, and so on. Now, suppose that we have the PL sentences to the right. What do they say in English? Let's begin with one. It is simply A and B joined by an ampersand. A is Al speaks Gaelic, B is Bill speaks Gaelic. The ampersand corresponds to AND. So what one says is Al speaks Gaelic and Bill speaks Gaelic, or more naturally, Al and Bill speak Gaelic. Sentence 2 says either Al speaks Swahili or Bill speaks Swahili. This can be expressed with more idiomatic sentences, such as either Al or Bill speak Swahili, or either Al speaks Swahili or Bill does. 3 is a conjunction, where the second conjunct is a negation. So the more direct translation would be Al speaks Swahili, and it is not the case that Bill speaks Swahili. But that sounds really stilted. A more English-friendly translation would be Al speaks Swahili, but Bill doesn't. Notice that I can use the conjunction but here, because there is a contrast between the fact that Al speaks Swahili and the fact that Bill doesn't. For is a negation of Al and Bill speak Swahili. So we can translate for as it is not the case that Al speaks Swahili and Bill speaks Swahili. Or, in a better translation, Al and Bill do not both speak Swahili.
And that's all for now. See you later.